You'll also be inspired by our daily devotional readings penned by some of ACOG's very own. These devotionals, along with guidelines of how and why we fast, can be viewed and downloaded from our website or from our app. It will also be beneficial during Holy Week to join Dr. Brazier for Courageous Prayer, Monday through Friday at 7.30, 8 o'clock, and 8.30 a.m. For in-person worship experiences, come to Empowered by the Word, Tuesday, March 26th, at 11 o'clock a.m. or Wednesday night Bible class, March 27th at 7 o'clock p.m. Lastly, join us on Good Friday for a special evening service. Then, make sure you're in the building on Sunday, March 31st, as we gather together to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. Stay connected and be engaged as we honor and celebrate our Lord and the power of the cross. Apostolic family, we know that the prayers of the righteous have much power and we're calling all ACOG family members to come together for corporate prayer as we prepare for the 92nd Bible Convention. We'll gather together as the body of Christ on Saturday, April 20th, beginning at 9 a.m. in the Dorchester Sanctuary. And we'll let our petitions be known at the throne of grace. We'll be praying for our teachers and preachers, our youth and young adults. We'll bombard heaven with a mighty move and have a great expectation of a mind-blowing Bible convention. Family, we need you to be a part of this church prayer as we set the atmosphere for a wonderful convention. Brotherhood, according to the American Cancer Society, prostate cancer death rates in African American men are more than double those of every other racial ethnic group. The Apostolic Church of God's Prostate Cancer Support Ministry's goal is to help achieve optimal prostate health through empowerment derived from education and awareness. Brothers, you're invited to attend our monthly meetings held the first Wednesday of each month in room FC 205 from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Come on out. Get informed, empowered, and be supported. family and guests we have an amazing children's church that's happening right now on the third floor our teachers and staff have planned an interactive worship experience for your children ages 4 to 13 they will experience God in a friendly and safe environment with an age demographic curriculum so take them up to children's church and watch as they grow in the knowledge of God and build lasting relationships God bless I've got a praise about how good the Lord has been. From now until the end, I'm going to give God praise. When the skies crack, when the Lord comes back and cracks the sky, I'm still going to be giving him praise. When the trumpet sound, I'm going to give him praise. When the dead in Christ shall rise first, I'm going to give him praise. And when everybody else is caught up, I'm going to be the one as we rise up. Lord, I'm going to give you praise today. Praise him. Thank him for his resurrection. Thank him for his grace. Thank him for that mercy that you've got. 
you're not, you're like that thief on the cross. But thanks be to God, he changed your heart. Thanks be to God, he changed your mind. Thanks be to God, he gave you all that you have needed. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everyone. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord one more time? I thank the Lord for each and every one of you. And for those who are watching by live stream, welcome to the Wednesday night service of the Apostolic Church of God. Uh, the Lord has been good to us, and I'm just so thankful for each and every one of you who have joined on this special night. Uh, we're going to have a special speaker, uh, Evangelist Lena Handy. Uh, she's going to be delivering the word of the Lord on tonight. Uh, this is a part of uh, our ministerial um, uh, process for uh, ensuring that all of our ministers, as many as have the, the talent and the skills and are gifted to speak to the congregation because they too have a word. Uh, and so I thank the Lord for her. I've known, I've known her and her family for many, many years. Uh, and I'm looking, I'm looking forward to hearing her in the Bible class. We heard her on a, on a Sunday morning during the preacher Rama, and now we're going to hear her teach. Uh, and I know that you are going to uh, be filled. And so without further ado, let us go before the Lord in prayer, and then I'll introduce uh, Evangelist Lena Handy. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in your name, we give you honor, glory, and thanks for your goodness and your mercy and for the grace, Lord, that you have given to us. We thank you. Because, Lord, you brought us here to hear your word, whether it be online or whether it be in person. And now, Lord, we pray your strength upon the speaker, Lord, as she delivers your word. Bless, uh, bless her, O oh Lord, as she moves through what she has prepared uh, under the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, let, let your spirit be seen. Let her, let her authenticity be seen. And we pray, Lord, that the words uh, will be received uh, by others and that the Holy Spirit will have free course in all of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. amen. And now without further ado, let us give uh, Evangelist Lena Handy and Apostolic Church of God welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. It's such a blessing. I am so humbled this evening uh, for this wonderful opportunity. And I want to also welcome our online guests that are visiting and also uh, the saints of God that are tuning in to us online. We have uh, Sister Anderson, praise the Lord. Brother Hayes, praise the Lord. And I, again, am just so grateful and so thankful for this opportunity. Uh, I know, Dr. Braze, you just prayed, but can we just have a brief moment of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we, first of all, thank you for who you are. Thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy, and grace. Let me decrease and you increase that someone may receive a word that will encourage and lift their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, first of all, I would just like to, to give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. I, this is a pinch me moment, amen. I would have never ever dreamed in a million years that I would have this opportunity to share the word of God in this format. And I also would like to give honor to our pastor, Dr. Brazier, for his vision and his willingness to allow us these opportunities. 
Also, I know I said happy birthday, belated birthday to you, but happy birthday to you, sir, and to Sister Lola Lafayette. Her birthday was yesterday also, so happy birthday. I also would like to give honor um, to our First Lady, Evangelist Mary Brazier, for her warm spirit, amen, and her loving heart, amen. And I would like to give honor and thanks to all of the assistant pastors, Elder Medias, Dr. Hayes, Evangelist Knuckles, all of them that have poured into me, Elder Ronald Smith, for all of his wonderful words of encouragement. I thank God for him. I also would like to acknowledge the official board, uh, Elder Gary Dodson, assistant pastor also, thank you. And all of the saints of God that I have the pleasure of serving with, from the baptismal ministry to the praise team, I, I could go on and on, the sanctuary choir, Deacon um, Knuckles back there, I thank God for you, I thank God for the leadership that I've had the opportunity to sit under, Sister Richardson, that has poured into me. But tonight, we are going to delve into the word. Um, I am coming out of Romans chapter 5, verses 8. And it says, and for your hearing, but God shows his love for us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And my subject this evening is... He changed my story. He changed my story to a love story. Amen? Why don't you tell your neighbor, he changed my story. He changed my story. And my intention for this class tonight is that you would walk away with a deeper love for Jesus, with a grateful heart and a thankful heart for what he did for us on Calvary. And in that, you will realize he changed your story. And as I was preparing for this class, I was listening to some music, because I'm a lover of music. I love all types of music. It could be, it could be pop, R&B, it can be country, classical, and of course, gospel. But as I was listening to the music and preparing for my lesson, it came to me, you know, all of us, no matter what genre of music it may be, we appreciate a good love song. We love to hear the words of a, lo of a love song that we can sing along to. I mean, it, it could be Ray Charles, I Can't Stop Loving You, to a Mary J. Blige, I'm Looking for a Real Love, or uh, one of those great love songs like Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You. We appreciate those love songs because they articulate what we feel in our hearts, we, what we're thinking in our heads. And so we, we love to hear those. We appreciate a good love song. And I believe that also translates to a good movie, a good love story movie. No matter how sappy it may be, we appreciate a love story. Uh, I believe that's why Netflix is doing so well because it's a lot of love stories on Netflix, right? And also, we, we just appreciate the story. Whether it's Sleepless in Seattle or uh, something a little darker like um, Meet Joe Black, where the main character comes face to face with the Grim Reaper or with death, but we love it so because it ends with an unbelievable love story. Yes, we need love in our lives. We appreciate a love story because we have found that love is essential in our lives. It has been proven that children need to feel love to develop. It has been proven that as family members, love is fundamental so that we can give and receive love. As, a, as adults, we pursue love. It's a personal goal to experience love and to give love. So today, we can appreciate a good love song. We can appreciate a good love movie. 
And we also, in viewing the movie, we appreciate the hero in the story. Uh, we're rooting for the good guy. We're rooting for the hero, and that person uh, is uh, looking for love, and we're hoping that they'll ride off into the sunset. Sometimes the story has a little twist. The twist may be the hero, the shero, dies for the one that they love. We're okay with that. But then some love stories have a totally different twist. That person who's the hero, the good guy, dies because of a villain or because or caused by a villain or a bad guy. Oh, we have a problem with that. It doesn't sit well with how we view love stories. It, it doesn't align with how we want the story to end. But thanks of God, today, I've got to keep it real. In this story called life, you and I are the bad guys. We're the sinners. I believe Evangelist Lorraine told us a little while ago that we are depraved. Yes, in this story called life, we're the bad guys. Yes, and if you don't believe me, we can look over in Psalm 51. It says, behold, I was shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. For we were living in sin and dwelling in sin, and it caused us to live a depraved life. If you don't believe me, you can look over in Mark 7, verses 20 to 23. It tells us, for it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. Whew, that's a lot right there. But... Everything that I've just read to you in that verse, we attribute and attach to a villain. Oh, it also tells us all these evils come from inside and defile the heart. So in this life, in this story called life, we were the bad guys. Jeremiah even says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Yes, God, in his infinite wisdom and in his everlasting love, saw us in our bad state. And in that state, he gave his only begotten son, uh, only begotten son. And Paul is trying to inform us. He's trying to get our attention and tells us, but God chose his love for us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I think we can say amen right there. Because we were the bad guys in this life. We were the sinners. But we still experience salvation. What Jesus did for us is remarkable. And that he changed our story is critical. Because what was happening with us, we were going down fast. We were on a slippery slope going straight to hell. But thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He changed our story. And today we can stand and proclaim the goodness of the Lord. Yes, yes. It is, it is important that at this moment and in time, we take this time, and if we didn't, we would be remiss. We would be negligent. We would even be foolish not to take a moment during this season of Lent, during this holy week, to acknowledge what Jesus did for us. Our words cannot express or articulate the pain that he felt on the cross. Words cannot articulate the humiliation he endured. Yes, Jesus died on the cross for us. He changed the trajectory of our lives. Paul is trying to emphasize the tremendous and unfathomable assignment that Jesus freely accepted, freely accepted when we were yet sinners. 
That's the apex and really the pinnacle of our life story, that he died on the cross for us and he changed our story. Yes, John, 1 John 3.16 says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life. Yes, Jesus, in that moment on the cross, he was beaten, he was, he was hung on the cross, he was stabbed on his side, he had crown of thorns placed on his head, and he laid, hung on that cross approximately six hours, and we can barely endure a paper cut for a couple of minutes. But for six hours, he languished on that cross for a bad guy, for a sinner, for you and me. So if we allow ourselves this moment in time to thank him and celebrate him for what he did on the cross, yes, we can never imagine, never imagine the pain emotionally, physically, mentally that he endured. But thanks be to God, and oh, what love that he showed us on that day, on that night. Yes, it's difficult for us, for us to grapple or even understand why he would do that for a bad guy, why he would do that for a sinner, why he would do that for me, because it's personal. Why would he do it for you? Paul tries to inform us in Ephesians. Yes, Ephesians 3, verses 8. He tells us that we need the Holy Spirit to actually help us understand that agape love. He says, power to understand how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ though it is too great to fully understand. We can't even understand how he could submit to that assignment. We can't understand why he would go through everything that he went through for us. Yes, he did it for us. He changed your story. He changed my story. And for that reason, we can fully, fully understand and fully live a life that is a love story. Amen. Yes, he took the sins of the world. And then through the shedding of his blood and his death and his burial and his resurrection, we can fully experience the love of the Father. Yes, in John 14, 3, it says, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. To experience the full love of the Father, that's something we can't comprehend. Not only do we experience the love of the Father, in 2 Corinthians 6, 18, he says, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. Yes, yeah, so we are honored, we are blessed being the sons and daughters of God Almighty. We're also adopted into this awesome family to be a part of this family of members in, in Christ. Ephesians 1 says, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Yes, we are part of the family. We are blessed being called a child of God. We're fully, we feel and experience being a child of God. Hebrews 2, 6, 12 says, I'm sorry, 1 John 3, 1 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us 
that we should be called children of God. I think we could just stop there and just recall and remember all of the wonderful blessings that he's given us all through life, how he's kept us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger, how he's protected our families, how he's allowed angels to encamp around our homes day and night. It's because of the lavish love that he has for us. And he considers us his children, his sons and daughters. And is there are privileges that come with that. Yes, we don't realize, we take it for granted that we're breathing. Well, we take it for granted that we're doing well on our jobs. We take it for granted that we're uh, prosperous in our businesses. We take it for granted that we're able to bear children and have families. We take it for granted, but it's the grace and mercy of God. He has lavished us with his love. Amen. And because of that, we have a changed story. God changed my story. And I thank him because we were, I had a, a story of death. We had a story of destruction. We had a story of despair. But he changed our story. Amen. To a love story. I thank God for that. And as we begin to reflect and think on these things, he also chose us. First Thessalonians says 1-4, for, for we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that he chose, he has chosen you. So don't get it twisted, as Evangelist Mary says. You didn't choose them. He chose you because of that lavish love that he's giving you daily. One songwriter, if I can quote, a great psalmist, vocalist, LaShawn Pace Rose. She's no longer with us, but she sings a song, I Know I've Been Changed. And she shares her thoughts during that song. And I paraphrase. In God's chemical laboratory of redemption, that he could take my black soul, covered with sin, dip it in his red blood, and I'm white as snow. I don't know about you, but that's love. <laughs> he knew my soul was black. He knew I was as filthy as filthy rags, but he dipped my soul, my black soul, and that blood shed on Calvary, that blood that was given for you and me. Oh, what love. Oh, what love. He changed our story this evening. And for that reason, we can live a life full of hope. We can live a life full of um, life. <laughs> we can live life more abundantly because he shed his blood. It was the shedding of his blood that healed us. It was the shedding of his blood that forgave us, set us free, made us whole, delivered us. Yes, because he changed my story, God sees me as beautiful. Because he changed my story, he sees me as white as snow. Because he changed my story, I'm more than a conqueror. Because he changed my story, I am redeemed. And let the redeemed of the Lord say so. <laughs> yes, you are redeemed because he changed your story. We no longer have to have this spirit of fear, but of love, peace, and a sound mind. You and I have joy, unspeakable joy. We have peace that passeth all understanding because he changed your story, amen. And so, as we look at this, as we realize that our story has been changed, we have to honor him for that. We have to take our time in our daily lives to reflect on what Jesus did for us, to praise and worship him for what he did for us. He went on that cross, and he had the power 
to come down, but he didn't do it. He stayed on that cross. He bared all of the pain and all of the heartache and all of the misery and all of the humiliation. He endured it for us so that we could live life more abundantly. 1 John 3.16, 1 John, yes, 3.16 says, again, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. This is how we know what love is. This is a perfect picture. This is a perfect example. Agape love personified right in front of us so that we can learn how to love, how we, that we may learn how to help our brothers and sisters, that we may learn not to be selfish, that we may learn how to give to one another. The perfect example in front of us. Oh, what perfect love that Jesus laid down his life just for you and me. Yes, thanks be to God. He changed our story. <laughs> I think if we just take a moment and to look, and really think about that, how he changed our story, to understand the love Jesus has for us, I think it would be appropriate that we observe and look at the relationship between Jesus and the Father. Oh, yes. What great love Jesus had for his father, that he obeyed his will. He submitted to the cross because he loved his father. And all through his public life, Jesus shared and gave us some insight into that relationship. He shared that in John 14, 13, so that the world may know that I love the Father. I do exactly as the Father commanded me. Again, this is the perfect example in front of us that we are to submit to the will of God. We are to be obedient to his word because of his great love. Jesus knew that he was here to do his father's business. He didn't have any problem telling anyone, I'm about my father's business. And I think we can stop and learn a lesson right from there that we've got to be about our father's business. We have got to love him with our whole heart, mind, and soul because of his great love. Just like Jesus, he submitted he laid his life down on the cross just for us. He also shared with us that I and the Father are one. He told them over and over, you see the Father, you want to see the Father? Look at me. He emulated his Father in every way. God loved us and Jesus loved us. Oh, what love. Also in John 15, 9, 15.9, it says, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. Oh, just to take time to break that down. The Father loved his Son. The Son loved the Father. And for that reason, we're lavished with that love. All we have to do is abide in that love. He's given us an opportunity when he changed our story to abide in that love, to live in that love, to desire that love. It tells us, delight thyself in, in the Lord. And I'm sorry. Woo. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Yes. He has loved me so. And that he welcomes us to abide in his love. Yes, God is love. And Jesus emulates his father and that he loves us also. 
And it was important. Paul wanted us to know, John wanted us to know that he loved his father and that he was sent to do his father's will. But we also need to take the opportunity and the time to look at the father, God the father, and his love. He created us out of love. He wanted us to live in, in worship of him, to praise him, and to find peace and love in him. So let us look at Psalms 136, because his fa our father's love is so great. It says, give thanks to God of heaven. His love endures forever. So we can't throw it away. His love endures forever. We can't toss it to the side, you know, when we get tired. No, his love endures forever. And if we just try to wrap our minds around that, what is forever, we can't. We can't really comprehend time as it relates to God. So for that reason, it's a mighty, 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 mighty long time. <laughs> His love is forever and ever. Also, if we look at John 3, 16, it tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yes, even when we were the bad guys, when we were the villains, he loved us. He died on the cross. He sent his son to die on the cross for us. I know I'm reiterating that over and over, but that's what's so important is because in this moment in time, in this holy week, we should acknowledge, take the time, stop what we're doing, acknowledge the love of our Father, acknowledge the love of Jesus Christ. Yes, we're so busy with life. We're so busy trying to get paid. We're so busy trying to make it in this world. Oh, it's not easy. And trust me, Jesus knew because he took on flesh. And he experienced everything that we experience. Heartache, heartbreak, disappointment, trials, without sin. But he understood and he recognized that this life, this story called life, it's hard, it's difficult, but because he changed our story, we have hope. We can look to the hills which cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord. He changed my story and I'm so grateful. Yes, the Father's love is so great, so wonderful, it's so awesome. And in Psalms 86, 15, it says, But you, Lord, are compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. What he's trying to say here, we, we make mistakes over and over and over again. We fall down, we get up. We even wrote a song about it. We fall down, but we get up because God knew that we needed someone to change our story. He knew we needed help. Yes, he's slow to anger. So many times we take this for granted, that God will forgive you. Every time you sin, we're not perfect. He knows that. But every time we sin, if we come to him, he'll forgive us. He'll forgive us. He'll give us his grace and his mercy. He'll give us his love. Oh, yes. The compassion that he has for us. He feels what we go through. He knows what we go through. He's slow to anger. And he's abounding in love and faithfulness. And as we say, from faith to faith, we just experience more and more of his love. Faith to faith, more and more of his grace and his mercy. He lavishes that love on us because he changed our story. Amen. He changed my story, and I'm so happy about it. And also, in this time of reflection of Holy Week, we've got to look at the cross, look at what he endured, 
And Dr. Brazier preached this a couple of weeks ago. Dr. Brazier instructed us to look up and tell Jesus, I owe you everything. I don't know about you, but that resonated in my heart. I owe you everything because you changed my story. I owe you because he loved me first. I didn't know about his love, but he loved me. I didn't know how to love him, but he loved me. He loved me first. I owe him everything. And I'm going to say it again, because he got up on that cross. <laughs> I think we just need to take a moment and say, thank you, Jesus. I owe you everything. Oh, yes, because he got up on that cross. I owe him everything because he did not come down. <laughs> he had all power to do so, but he gave his life. He stayed on that cross. He endured the pain. He endured the hardship and stayed on that cross. I owe you everything because he changed my story to a love story. I owe him everything because he told me he's coming back for me. In that alone, he's coming back for you and me so that we can live in heavenly places to understand and see his father, to live and worship him throughout eternity. I owe him everything because of eternal life. Oh, yes, he changed our story. And Jesus continually welcomes us to abide in his love. Yeah. It's up to you. It's up to me. We can step outside of the love and, and live a different type of life, but he's welcomed us to abide in him. Years ago, uh, we used to sing a song, He Abides. He abides in me forever. I was just a little girl. Never knew what that really meant, but loved the melody. He abides, he abides, he abides. But that was telling me a story that he abides down on the inside. And he's going to abide with me forever. And he wants us to abide in his love. Take advantage of that. It mind boggles us why as saints of God who have experienced the love, why would you give that up? Why would you turn away when he's lavished us with so much love? And I want someone who doesn't have Christ to look at me and say, I want what she has. <laughs> I want them to see the goodness of Jesus. I want them to see his mercy and his grace. So I'll tell it. I'll tell it everywhere I go, <laughs> that he saved me, amen. I'll sing it everywhere I go, that he changed my story, amen. Yes, we are witnesses of that love that he's lavished on us. We are witnesses that he changed your story. So we're to tell someone, share your testimony. Mm, I don't mind telling everybody, I lost it all. I lost everything, everything, my house, my property, my car, my job. But because of his great love, his mercy, he wouldn't let me stay down. He kept blessing me. He kept moving me forward. Amen. So tell it everywhere you go. That he changed my story. He changed the trajectory of my life. Oh, yes. One saying that says, he flipped the script. <laughs> he flipped the script and changed a life of death, a story of misery, a story of hell, a story of despair, to a love story. He loves you. Oh, what love. Oh, what love. And he continues to welcome us into that love. I thank God for that, amen, that he continues to welcome us in his love. Jesus' love is the example. He is agape personified. That sacrificial love, the love that we cannot understand, we cannot completely comprehend, 
but we can strive to be more like him. The verse tells us, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Oh, what love. The Psalms tells us, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. His love endures forever. And I thank God for it. So during this holy week, as we celebrate Jesus, let's acknowledge his love. Because without his sacrifice, without his love and his father's love, there would be no Calvary. Without the love, there would be no resurrection morning. Without the love, there would be no eternal life. But it was the love that he had for us that he humbly submitted to the cross. Yes, he changed our story. And in that demonstration and that expression of love, we can clearly see what love is. So we can love our spouses better. We can love our children better. We can love our neighbor better. We can love our church members better because we have that perfect example, that expression, that demonstration of the cross right in front of us. Yes, he moved our lives from a life of despair. He moved our lives from a life of destruction and death. You know how the stories are, the, the love stories. You know, sometimes they have to fight and go through uh, I believe it was that movie which comes to my mind, Fourth of July, with uh, Will Smith. All that he had to go through to find his love. Just imagine all that Jesus went through to change our story. And so for that reason, we should commit to that verse that says, Romans 8, 39, nothing, nothing, nothing will separate me <laughs> from the love of God in Christ. We should be committed to that. Nothing will turn me around. I remember a song, my mind is made up. I'm not turning away. I'm not turning around. Nothing, I will not allow anything to separate me from the love of God in Christ. See, he took my sad story and made it a love song and a love story. First John 4, 19 says, we love him because he first loved us. Amen, that's just awesome right there. I think that wraps it all up. We love him because he first loved us. So saints of God, in your time of reflection, your worship and your gratefulness, Remember what Jesus did for us, that he changed our story. And even try to sing him a love song. <laughs> There's so many out there. Sing Jesus a love song. Oh, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me, amen. Or sing him. Sing to him, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Oh, yes. Love, love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. When I was broken, when I was desperate, when I was destitute, when I was scared, when I was lonely, nothing else could help. Nothing else. And love lifted me. Oh, yes. I remember as a little girl singing, yes, yes. Jesus loves me. Yes, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. Sing a love song to Jesus. Tell him how much you love him. Spend some time with him. Worship him, adore him, glorify him. 
And in doing so, acknowledge, whoo, he changed my story. <laughs> he changed my story. So today, we have to take the time to remember and to acknowledge our Lord and Savior. We have to take the time to read his word, study his word. Learn what the Father and how the Father loves us. Learn how the Father gave his Son for us. It is our responsibility as children of God that has had their story changed, their trajectory shifted, the script turned upside down. It's our responsibility to do that, to acknowledge Jesus. And in knowing and living our love story, we can now share it with someone else. The Great Commission, go out and preach Jesus. Share the good news of Jesus. Share the gospel. And in that, it says, Romans 5, 8, but God shows his love for us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. So I am now going to open the church doors for an altar call. If there is anyone here that knows that their story needs to be changed, they need a changed story. If there's anyone here that wants to experience the love that God has lavished on us. If you are online and watching and have never experienced the love of Jesus, this is your opportunity, this holy week. He died on the cross for you and I. Don't let this moment pass you by where you don't acknowledge his love that you don't acknowledge his story, your story, my story, this life, the story called life. He changed our story. And he's here for you. He wants you to experience his love. Oh, what love. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. I just want to give uh, honor to our pastor again. And to also, I didn't acknowledge my family. My mom and sister are here. And also, acknowledge my dad because he's no longer with us, Elder Martin Handy. Oh, oh I'm sorry. We have one candidate. Amen. Let's give God some honor. Amen. It's never, ever too late. It's never too late. But to acknowledge my dad, Elder Martin Handy, whose birthday is today. Again, he's no longer with us. But we thank God for what he poured into me. God bless. Let us give the evangelist another hand. How many of you know the Lord changed your life? The Lord changed your story. And I thank the Lord for that message and for that word, each and every one of you who have, who have joined on tonight, those who are watching by live stream. We have one soul that has come to give their life to Jesus Christ. Let us give God a great hand praise. And without further ado, it is now offering time at the Apostolic Church of God. I want you to give humbly unto the Lord as the Lord has blessed you. I want you to bless him. For those who are watching by live stream, you've heard a great word, and we, we ask that you also give as the Lord has prospered you. Uh, uh, we, we do this as a, uh, as a part of our worship that we give back to the Lord. And because you might be online doesn't mean that uh, you, you, you do not feel the need to give. Uh, we want you to give. Uh, and so, so please do so. And we're looking forward to seeing you uh, on Friday night prayer. Uh, for those who are members here, Friday night prayer, we're having prayer on Friday, uh, beginning at seven o'clock for one hour. And so looking forward to you all who are here 
as well as those who are watching via live stream. And then Sunday is communion, and we always look forward to that. So without further ado, as you, as you take a look, and whether you do text to give or, or however you do that, uh, please, please let us, uh, let us give humbly unto the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in your name, we give you honor, glory, and thanks for your goodness and your mercy. And we thank you, Lord, for this time of giving and this time of grace, this time of memory and this time of reflection. And we ask, Lord, that you will bless this offering, sanctified for the use and the work of the ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. Ushers, please come forward. Now that, now that we, we're pretty much um, uh, off camera from the standpoint of uh, our live stream, and for those who are for Saving Grace, if you would cut the live stream feed, that would be fine with me. Uh, there's some things I'd like to say to the congregation uh, that are very, very important that do not require that to be on live stream because I'll probably say it again on Sunday. Uh, there is a, there is a, a, a passage of scripture in 